Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today's episode is going to be entitled Deep Cuts, and it's about a particular song that did not make this band's biggest record. The band I'm talking about is The Police, and the song is Murder by Numbers. Now, it never made synchronicity because it wouldn't fit on the album. You see, LPs could only hold a certain amount of music. People were still buying albums at that time. That was right around the transition period where people went from buying LPs to buying CDs. CDs came out around 1983, right when the record came out. So this song ended up being the B-side of Every Breath You Take, which is where I heard it first. I bought the single. I was like, oh, what's this song? Murder by Numbers. Then I heard it and I was like, wow. This is cool. This is uh, this has the weirdest chord progression I've ever heard on a pop song. Another interesting thing about the song is that Sting showed up to a Frank Zappa gig and played it with Zappa on stage. And if it's cool enough for Zappa to play, it's cool enough to make a video about. As far as the writing of the song is concerned, what I've read is that Andy Summers came up with the chord progression, gave it to Sting, and Sting said, oh, I think I have a lyric for this. And then they went in and cut it live. And if you listen to it, there's really no overdubs. It sounds like a live vocal take. There's no second guitar part. I think that they actually just played it down in the studio like I've read, and that's it. Let me play you the beginning of the song. It starts in three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Or it could be six, four, five, six. But you really aren't sure where the downbeat is, it sounds like the downbeat's right here. Three, one, two, three, whoa. Well, the time just turned around there. Okay, so what just happened there? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the kick drum is on two and four. Three, four. Okay, let's figure out how to count this. Now, one thing you have to listen for is the first clink in Stuart Copeland's drum pattern because that is actually one. So the very first thing that you hear is one. So it goes like this. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can tell that Sting is right on time here. So he's been counting all along. And if you think about the chorus lyrics, when he goes one, two, three, he's actually thinking about numbers, right? And Stuart Coleman gets changes it, turns it around just for a second right there. But then when it goes into the chorus, then now the snare is on two and four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three. And then, here we go. No kick yet. I think that Stuart Copeland was probably, I don't know if he was just counting it, because this is really one take all the way through. I'm positive of it. He probably was leaving the space and thinking, oh, where do I come back in here? It's so great. Okay, let's talk about that chord progression. Andy Summers starts out to E minor 7, F sus 4 over A, B7 sharp 9 to B flat major 7 sharp 11. Let me play along with it. Okay, 
it's right there, just before the chorus, he goes up to F sharp, seven sharp, nine to F major seven sharp, 11, down to B minor seven. Okay, so what makes this chord progression weird? Well, the first chord's pretty standard, E minor seven, but the second chord is an F sus four over A, and I can't think of that chord, I mean, You'll find it occasionally, but not in an open, blatant way like that. The thing that makes it really cool is, is that interval there of a flat nine, A to B flat. That gives it an incredibly sharp dissonance. And then, then you have the B seven sharp nine, and then that, like I said, B flat major seven sharp 11. I can't think of another pop song that has a chord progression that weird and also has a chorus as good as this. Now the chorus is over a different chord progression. Let's check that out. So it's simply E minor seven, F sharp minor seven, G, and back and forth. There's a little walking bass thing that Andy Summers does that you'll hear in there. It goes like, uh, that really fills in the gaps and moves the chorus along. Let's listen. Just before he goes back into the verse, he goes back to the B7 sharp nine. Next, let's talk about the melody in the chorus because this song has a great hook in it. And it's over actually a kind of a mundane chord progression. This is really... Kind of a boring chord progression, but Sting writes this great melody over it using just the E minor blues scale. Let's take a look at the melody. I've put it below so that you can see what notes are over what chords, but there's a pickup to it, which starts uh, D to E, and it starts on that B7 sharp nine. Then it goes right to the third of the E minor seven chord. Then to the flat seven on the F sharp minor seven chord. Then to the third on the G major chord, back to the flat seven, and then does that little uh, D to E, but really you could say that's more like a D over F sharp. And then... That's the only spot that, that has that, uh, has a grace note to the ninth over the G chord. All chord tones, really, except for the A on the G chord, the ninth on there. All the rest of it is a straight chord tone melody, which is why it works so well. Another thing that makes it memorable are those big interval jumps of the fifth. So, so that fifth interval from E to B Large interval jumps like that make melodies memorable. If you think of John Williams' Superman theme, it starts on G. Right there is a fifth. So it goes from G down to C, which, which is down a fifth, and then back up. Then up a fourth. So that's really all fourths and fifths. Large interval jumps, once again, very memorable. Those That's a, that's a writing technique that a lot of people don't realize. If you write really scalar melodies, you get things that sound like other things, and they're not that interesting. You have to have some interval jumps in your melodies to make them strong. I wanna go on to, to the end of the tune. There's a, a really cool thing. Now Sting is obviously playing an upright, I would think he's either playing an upright electric or fretless bass on this, which he did quite a bit of the time. And when he goes here at the end, he has a little bit of a, right here. It has a little intonation problem there on that F sharp seven sharp nine chord. He's a little bit flat on it, which once again tells me this is a live take, which makes it so great. Listen. And then you have the last chorus. Walks up right there on that sharp. He does a he does a, a lot of times he's doing that first inversion on the when it descends back to the F sharp minor on the uh, the second bar. So it's 
then Sting goes goes to the A when Andy Summers is playing the F sharp minor seven there. So he's playing the third in the bass. Listen. <laughs> And then the vamp is the intro chord, the verse chords. Two, three, one, two, three, one. So good. Oh, yeah. So we get a good, nice B alter there. Instead of the sharp nine, it gives that the flat nine on the top of that chords. All straight out of jazz. Great rhythm track by Andy Summers. So in the pocket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is why the police were one of the greatest bands of all time. And if you think about this and you and you if you think about the next record that Sting did after the police, his first solo record, which was Dream of the Blue Turtles, this is very reminiscent of that when he started playing with Branford Marcellus and Omar Hakim and and um, Kenny Kirkland. And this was the I would say this style was really the template for what was to come in Sting's solo records, especially the first two solo records. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If, if you guys think that I should make this into a series, please put it in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you're a new subscriber, remember to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. You can buy a t-shirt there, buy my book, buy a mug. This is how I support the channel. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. I put up a lot of guitar-based video there. There's just a different vibe of what I do there. And if you really want to become a bigger supporter of the channel, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching.